Hello everybody! Today I'm going to cover basic guidelines for a physical Windows installation. You don't need Windows at all for our cloud project, but I decided to use Windows because of my work. My employer uses Windows extensively and it's good for me to understand how it works since I oversee services that run on top of the Windows platform. Windows also makes a fine virtualization platform with Hyper-V and I've been very successful with it. If you don't have the budget or are not interested in Windows, we will cover a full Linux setup during the next episodes. Here I'm not going into the details on how to install Windows Server because we all have different environments, but I will cover four basic points. First one is RAID. RAID in a server is very important for continuity of services and the safety of your data. Storage separation where I'm going to cover how I organize the data uh, across different volumes. Encryption. In Windows, this is provided by BitLocker. And network isolation for VMs that I do by using two different physical Ethernet adapters on my server. RAID is an essential piece to ensure continuity of service. Our cloud project will rely on multiple entry points and multiple servers, so we can afford to have a server down. But RAID will reduce chances of having a server down by ensuring the data remains available for operating system applications and services in case a hard drive is lost. I chose to use the built-in RAID feature from my server motherboard, as you can see here in the device manager. So Windows sees two disks pa paired in RAID 1 as a single physical device. When you're ready to build your server, you need to ensure what is the best RAID solution for you based on cost and criticality. The minimum requirement, at least for me, is to ensure both OS storage and data storage are redundant. I tend to separate the storage spaces used for operating systems or virtual machines and the application data. This is very useful in case I need to migrate services, applications or virtual machines to different servers and need to attach the application data storage to different servers temporarily or permanently. In my case, here I have two 500 gig RAID 1 sets, as you can see here in my computer and in device manager. One is for Windows and virtual machines, and the second one here is for application data and storage. Since they are RAID 1 sets, I could lose one hard drive in each RAID pair and still have the server and applications completely functional. For encryption, you may argue that you would not need encryption for your home server storage and perhaps you are right. But since one of our goals is to build knowledge that can be transported to our professional lives, we are going to encrypt everything. My system drive is encrypted using BitLocker, but I don't leverage a trusted platform module. I use SB stick for the encryption key instead. That way, after the system is booted, I can remove the USB stick from my HP micro server and in case the server is removed during my absence, it, would, it won't be bootable and my data is safe. The application data storage is unlocked after boot time manually after I log in, with a password I know only by heart. In case I'm coerced to give the USB boot key, my application data is still completely safe. Here you can see, uh, system C doesn't have a password set, only the USB stick and D, yes, I can change password and etc. And if you go here to Trusted Platform Module Administration, you see that there is no module installed, so I cannot use it. It can be an option for you if you don't mind the system being bootable uh, in your absence. You still just need to ensure that the data remains protected in case 
the server is moved else elsewhere. I run virtual machines under Hyper-V here and there are no attacks that leverage the, some vulnerabilities in the network stack and network traffic to gain access to your host machine. So I installed a second card um, into my server here, as you can see, and the host machine is only the onboard card and the PCI Express card installed here is assigned to the virtual machines. So here, if we go to the task manager and go to performance, you see only one Ethernet card because the other one is assigned exclusively for virtual machine use. We are going to cover the details of assigning a network card to a virtual machine, a physical network card to a virtual machine, later on when we cover deploying a server using Hyper-V. That's it for today. Thank you for watching and we will speak next time.